Hey YouTube, how you doing? Thanks for stopping by. This is Matthew with the Counselors Guild. Today we'll be looking at a classic psych review of the Oedipus Complex. Let's take a look. First, why don't we go over the Oedipus Rex? Uh, it's an ancient Greek play written by Sophocles. And uh, I got a little tidbit of it right here. Uh, Oedipus okay, is the son of Laius, the king of the Thebes and Jocasta, the queen. And Oedipus is exposed as a suckling because an oracle, Delphi, or Delphi, uh, had informed the father that his son, who was still unborn, would be his murderer. Okay, so the king, when, when, when Oedipus is born, the king sends him off to, you know, be discarded. Um, and Oedipus is rescued by, I think, a farmhand uh, or a farmer and grows up as a king's son in a foreign court, okay? Being uncertain of his origin, he too consults the, the oracle and is warned to avoid his native place. He is, for he is destined to become the murderer of his father and the husband to his mother, okay? On the road leading away from his supposed home, he meets King, king Laius, and a sudden quarrel strikes him dead. So he kills his father. He's unaware of that, his, uh, that's his father. Uh, and he makes his way to Tebs, where he solves the riddle of the Sphinx, who is barring the way to the city. Whereupon he is elected king by grateful Tebans, uh, by the grateful Tebans, and is a, uh, rewarded with the hand of Jocasta, his mom. He reigns for many years in peace and honor, and begets two sons and two daughters upon his unknown mother, until at last a plague breaks out which causes the Tebans to consult the oracle uh, again. Um, and the oracle, uh, here is Sophocles, Sophocles, tragedy begins, the messenger brings the reply that the plague will stop as soon as the murder of Laius is driven from the country. But where is he? So Oedipus, you know, he, you know, scours the land looking for this person, trying to figure out who it is. And I think the farmer that raised him ends up uh, telling Oedipus that you know who he who he is, uh, who he killed that you know that one day. Uh, so Oedipus finds out who he really is, and who his mother really is, and and uh, he ends up like I think gouging out his eyes, and the mother ends up killing herself, and that's the Oedipus Rex, in a very short um, um, uh, I guess summarization of it. So why does the Oedipus Rex have anything to do with psychology? Why does why does why would anyone put this play into a theory of development? Why 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 does this, what does this have to do with anything? Um, Freud uh, he thought that the instinct to sleep with the mother and kill the father was common. Okay. He even said it in his interpretation of dreams that it's common for um, boys to ha uh, fantasize and have dreams of having sex with the mother. Okay, and he believed that the reason why this play resonated with so many people and impacts people the way that it does is because we all have this drive, this common drive among us. Okay. So he put it in his theory of development, okay? Uh, so <clears throat> I'm going to say that, uh, I'm just going to read here, uh, but we have to start somewhere, okay, with repressing instinctual drives. This is the first test, the Oedipus complex, and will grow to help us repress other instinctual drives, okay? This is the start of the transition from taking everything you want, you know, the id, right? Taking everything you want to start telling yourself no, well, or repressing instinct drive. And this is all unconscious, so it's not like telling yourself no, but it's more about repressing instinctual drives that go against the superego, okay? Um, and this is unconscious. We don't really know this is happening. Um, and this happens during the phallic stages, so, anyone who knows an infant, you know, toddler, um, knows that they want, you know, they want what they want, okay? 
they're going to cry and scream and have a tantrum over it. Um, the only reason they're not getting it is because the parents there are keeping them. Uh, or if it's like during an oral phase, it could be the parent providing it. Okay, So they start crying and then they get it. They get their way, basically. So this is, this is the transition from, from doing that, you know, from that primitive getting what you want, me see, me like, me want, to, okay, now I got I to gotta act a certain way. Okay? The Oedipus complex facilitates that transition from you know, one way of being to another because it creates a superego. And I'm going to go over superego in the next slide. And this happens during the phallic stages. Now, um, this is between three and six years. Okay, there's five stages uh, for Freud's the, uh, theory of development. The first is oral. Okay, we cry, we get fed, oral. Two is anal. Okay, bathroom habits. Um, and then three is phallic. Okay, the phallic stage. Okay, um, is where the infant's libido, libido, sorry, desire centers upon the genitalia. Okay, so it goes mouth, anal, genitals. Um, and it, it, it's what they call the erogenous zone. Okay, this zone is an area of the body that is particularly sensitive to stimulation. Okay, it's a source of pleasure. And the id, okay, is driven to stimulate. Right? It does so in the oral. It does so in the anal. Um, it, it, it stimulates it. But now you're in the phallic stage. And stimulating it, well, that can get you in trouble. Okay? So we, we have to have that superego to start to develop okay, in order to suppress or repress those instinctual drives. The child becomes aware of anatomical sex differences, which sets in motion the conflict between erotic attraction with the mom and resentment, rivalry, rivalry, jealousy, and fear of the dad. Okay. Uh, this is resolved through the process of identification, which involves the child adapting to characteristics of the same set parent, but also um, Freud's concept of the castration anxiety. This is where the boy fears. Uh, of loss or damage to the genital organ, which is the uh, the erogenous zone, right? That is the big pleasure seek uh, area right now. As punishment for insensual wishes towards the mother, and murderous fantasies towards the rival father. During the oral phase, I cry, I get fed. During the genital phase, I can't. Right? Bad things can happen to me. I'm, I'm going to lose it. I don't want to lose it. <laughs> uh, so it's creating this anxiety, and it's creating. Uh, this is uh, suppression, okay, to uh, act on these instincts, okay. And the process of identification, we go back up to this, the second from the bottom point, uh, which involves a child adapting characteristics of the same-sex parent. I think that that the that comes after castration anxiety, um, I believe. But also, I want to make a comment on that. Uh, I felt like. Um, the boy takes on the characteristics of the father to help him find his own mate. Like, just unconsciously, you take on, like, you know, the, how they act, their humor, um, you know, different things that they that, that unconsciously you think will help you bring your own mate, you know. Um, so that is, the, that is where the Oedipus complex fits into his theory of development. Okay. All right. So superego. This is the the big thing. This is what you know the Oedipus complex kind of bursts. Okay, this is where the superego comes in. This is the superego, and it's the last component of personality to develop, according to Freud. Okay. According to Sigmund Freud, this is the second point. Uh, his psychoanalytic theory of personality. The superego is the component of personality composed of the internalized ideals that we have acquired from our parents and society. The superego works to suppress, suppress the urges of the id, right? So the Oedipus complex starts that process of suppressing the urges of the id and tries to make the ego behave morally rather than realistically, okay? The ego ideal, so the superego has two parts, the ego ideal and the conscience. The ego ideal 
includes the rules and standards for good behaviors. These behaviors include those that are approved by the parental or other authority figures. Obeying these rules leads to feelings of pride, value, and accomplishment. Breaking these rules can result in feelings of guilt. The ego ideal is often thought of as the image we have of our ideal selves, the people we want to become. Our dad, right? Father, we want to become them because he's got a mate. I want a mate. It is a it is this image of the ideal individual, often modeled other people after people that we know, that we hold up as a standard of who we are to, striving to be. The conscience is comprised of the rules for which behaviors are considered bad. When we engage in actions that conform to the ego ideal, we feel good about ourselves, are proud of our accomplishments. When we do things that our conscience considers bad, we experience feelings of guilt. So we get this ego ideal of who we want to be, and then we have this conscience, either we're going to feel good or feel bad, depending on our behavior. Okay, so this is the super ego. So if we give, let the id, you know, uh, take over or let it get way, and we do something that goes against our ego, ego ideal, well, we're going to feel bad about that. We're going to feel guilty. Okay, I'm a nice person, but I cut that person off and gave him the finger. I feel really bad about that. Okay, and we got to resolve that. Okay, usually, you know, <laughs> I don't know how you can resolve that, but uh, you know, we usually all find a way, or we'll just forget about it, or we'll, we'll, uh, you know intellectualize it or something like that so uh, anyway let's not get off uh, off topic here so super ego so what this complex causes the Oedipus complex is the centerpiece for Freud's theory of development the centerpiece which means it is the nuclear complex of neuroses Freud found that neuroses was to be attributed to sexual seduction in the early years of childhood he uses the Oedipus complex to explain this. Freud thought that patients reproduce scenes from their early childhood in which some adult person sexually seduced them. Freud was therefore led to conclude that premature sexual experiences of this nature con- constituted sexual traumas. The experience themselves seemed to have no effect at the time, but mental impressions of the experiences were retained although they remained unconscious. The memory of the experience was reactivated at puberty, producing pathological results. So we have to suppress those instinctual drives to um, you know, experience sexual seduction. Okay. We got castration anxiety. So what happens when, when we, we don't suppress those instinctual drives? What happens if, if we do you know, I mean, three and six, I mean, it's, you don't really, I don't think you really have a, you don't have much of a, a choice. You know, if you're going to be sexually abused at three, it's, it's abuse. You know, I don't think it's um, seduction. Uh, so, anyway, I don't know where I was going with that, but it's just the way it's worded. It makes it feel like it was, uh, you, you know, a three or six, three to six year old sexually should seduce somebody. And it's, it's, it's not like that. Um, the memory of the experience is reactivated purity. Okay, how does this impact an individual's ego ideal and conscience? Okay. How does this, how this affect somebody's super ego? You know? Well, this is where neurosis comes in at. Okay? The guilt um, the person feels for not living up to their ego ideal, maybe. Um, I mean, we all know that Sexual abuse as a child is, is I don't want to say causes, but there is a high correlation of mental illness with sexual abuse as a child. Okay, um, so we all know that you know the neuroses. We don't really use that word anymore, but a lot of mental illness can be attributed to sexual abuse. A lot of addictions, cutting, suicides, depression. Um, I mean, the list can go on and on. Um, not, not, I mean, PTSD. So there's so many mental illnesses that could come from sexual abuse as a child. Uh, how does this impact the individual's ego, ideal, and conscience? Uh, let me know what you think in the, cons, uh, in the comments below. 
what, what are your ideas? Um, ultimately, this is Freud's attempt to explain how earlier experiences can lead to neuroses later in life. Okay, remember Freud, he didn't have much to go off of. You know, he was true. He was, he found that you know these you know neur neurotics, these neurotic people. What, what ails them is not biological, it's psychological. And he's trying to come up with reasons why this person is neurotic. That doesn't have anything to do with the biological brain, or any kind of organic um, you know, thing. It's, it's psychological. It's unconscious. You know, he creates these concepts to kind of explain why somebody might be the way they are. Okay. It's probably not easy to do. I mean, we, it, it, you can't sit and, you know, you can't be in, in the year 2021 and be like, man, Freud comes up with some weird stuff. You know, I just, I don't think that you can, uh, you, you know, you're not appreciating what, um, you know, what he's contributed uh, if you're using or if you're looking at this, this, this uh, Oedipus complex as a negative way. I think. It's uh, it's kind of far fetched. It is out there, uh, <laughs> um, but I think it's it's his attempt to try to uh, explain how early childhood experiences can lead to lead to neuroses. Okay, but also I think he tried to explain, you know, when the super ego starts to develop. So he used the the Oedipus complex as that uh, that that uh, driving for us to creating the super ego. Uh, yeah, is that everything? Yep, that's everything. So that is the Oedipus complex. When I started uh, researching this, because I am not a Freud expert, uh, not a classical trained psychoanalytic, uh, I, I've read, a, you know, what I've learned in grad school and undergrad, which isn't much. It, it, I don't think it's a whole lot about the Oedipus complex. Uh, so I did a little. I, I did a little research. It's actually a really big thing. Um, it's not this small concept. It, it's a lot to uh, to look at. A lot of research. A lot of reading about it. Um, but I feel like uh, it's it's still an interesting concept. I think it's very interesting, um, and uh, I look at it as an appreciation. And for it, you basically making something from nothing, you know, um, coming up with these ideas and these theories and how people behave is, is very interesting. So, but that's all I have for you tonight. Uh, please like, subscribe, uh, leave a comment. Let me know. Did I get something wrong? Uh, I, I am, I'm okay with, with anyone leaving comments. Uh, but just uh, let me know. Uh, thank you so much for watching and you have a blessed day. Bye.